Oh, All yeah, right, man, let's hop right into it today. Here we are at the Better Humanology podcast. Welcome, Talon. Hey, thanks, Jared. <laughs> Caught you off guard. I hit record before anyone was ready. But yeah. we're here today, and <laughs> we're going to be talking about Murph. Uh, I, I want to talk about Murph for a little bit. Maybe you can be my hype man in the background. No, yeah. Or you got some questions? I don't <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And then uh um, It's been a while since I've done a Murph, but I know you've been hitting the grindstone with it. So. Yeah, we'll talk about that. And then we also want to cover a cool idea, a cool I don't know if it's a theory. It's technically it's a law. Parkinson's law is what we're gonna be talking about today. And we're gonna try and challenge your brains a little bit about your goals and what you're trying to achieve and make you do such faster. So everything today one hundred percent geared towards making you a better human faster than a speeding bullet i ran until my muscles burned and my veins pumped battery acid more powerful than a locomotive an idea is like a virus resilient highly contagious able to leap tall buildings with a single bound welcome to the better humanology podcast where that is our goal uh if you can't tell from the name we are here to make you better humans, make ourselves better through research, study, interviews, all sorts of stuff. And that's it. Yeah. And I'm, I'm super glad to have you on another podcast, man. We, we've been a little sporadic lately. We have, but uh, I'm glad to be back as well. Yeah, it's been a little while. Having a baby sometimes throws some things off every now and then, but we're back. Throws a lot of things off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I know a lot of people out there can relate. Let's Let's hop into it today. Um, I wanted to talk about Murph just for a minute. Uh, for anyone who's unfamiliar, so really, it's been like 18 weeks ago, I guess, because I've done 18 Murphs. But my God, I, that's when I first challenged you to do yeah. a Murph. Yes. And so you did your first Murph, um, and then when we recorded that podcast, I was like, out of nowhere, I'm going to do Murph every <laughs> every week for a year, and so th- that's what I'm doing. And so I just wanted to give everyone an update. I did an update podcast after I'd finished, I think, eight or nine. And now I'm at 18. And Oof. just want to give an update on how that's going. Because uh, I've done it just about every way that you can do it now. I've done uh, no vest. I've done it vested with a 20-pound vest. I've done it strict. I've done it. I've partitioned the pull-ups. I've partitioned the calisthenics every way, shape, or form. I've ran the miles fast, I've ran them slow, I've literally done everything at this point, and I'm only 18, 18 out of 52, so <laughs> uh, it's still a long way to go, and I want to do something really special for 20, like double-weighted Murph, or like double, or like two rounds for time Murph, like a double Murph or something, but I haven't decided yet, but 20 is going to be special, uh, and you guys, if you want to follow along on that, I, I post every week on Instagram, I post a picture of... Uh, kind of the aftermath of Murph in my time, whether it's good, bad, or ugly, whether I PR'd or I sucked, uh, I post it on Instagram. You can follow me at EO3Fit if you want to check that out. So the main thing I want to talk about Murph today was mental toughness. So Talon, when you were going through your Murph, I know it's been a little while, um, did you, where in the the workout, backtracking again, for anyone who doesn't, who's not aware of what Murph is, run a mile, 100 Mm -hmm pull-ups 200 push-ups 300 squats run a mile so where where in that workout do you feel like you i don't know your brain was kind of like okay this is starting to suck you know the the other side of your subconscious kind of comes out and tells you like all right we don't want to do this anymore where do you feel like that came in to play probably at like the uh fourth or fifth pull-up <laughs> <laughs> right after the first mile you're like i mean yeah i i, I had a really you know kind of augment my my workout a little bit because pull-ups for me getting 100 pull-ups i've been there for a week probably (laughs) right and and that that um getting those just that first few really really hurt so i think my mental kind of wall was pretty early in the calisthenics portion um the mile of course you know i've i've been a runner for a long time but when i started getting into that you know those hundreds of repetition repetitions i was just I was starting to feel it. I mean, it, it was starting to hit me. It was like, okay, uh, yeah, you know, you're by yourself right now. Nobody's around. You could probably quit and just, you know, right. not do anymore. But um, 
But since I was only doing one, and it was for science, right? It was for the benefit of science for all for everyone out there. Right. And, and, I, and I had to hold myself accountable, right? So I had to finish it. But it definitely hit me early. Um, there's a reason I haven't done one since. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how you would continue to do it, sir, but um, that first one about killed me. Well, you know what's really cool is we did the podcast, and I've challenged a lot of people to do Murph, and I get emails, people tagging me on Instagram, hitting me up on Twitter, Facebook, everything, uh, sending me pictures of like yeah, their jacked up hands from them doing Murph. Like some guys are 10, 12, 15 Murphs in. They're like right behind me. Uh, they started almost as soon as we recorded, recorded that podcast. So Damn. I do want to say how inspired I am by uh, just the listeners out there doing it. And I also want to challenge anyone out there who hasn't done one yet to go do Murph. And the reason I challenge people to do it and the reason I like this workout so much is because of what I just brought up to you was the fact that that wall, it's going to be there for everyone. And if you never hit that wall, then you're not pushing yourself hard enough. It's that simple. Yeah. And what I've found for me right now is it's mile two. That's where I hit it every time. <laughs> and, you know, I explain this as kind of wearing armor. It's your mental toughness armor everyone it's like some people have armor made out of cardboard some people have it made out of paper some people have it made out of sheet metal some people have it made out of iron you know but everyone has their own level of armor and this is of course metaphorical because yeah yeah uh, but so it's it, your mental armor it's your mental armor and everyone likewise has a point on how how quickly that armor is going to break down and, and right. fall off and yeah that could be the second you hit the pull-ups, that could be in the second mile. That could be at the last 400 meters of the run or whatever. Uh, but that's why I like the workout so much. And that's why I like to challenge people because just like in strength training, if you're doing five reps of five reps or doing as many reps as possible, it's not those first couple reps that really do that much for your body. It's it's the later reps. It's the pushing yourself. It's going all out. And I really feel that building your mental toughness and getting better mentally is no different. And so I think you have to break down all your walls, all your armor, get to that vulnerable state, and find out who you are. Uh, meet yourself is what I've called. I've written about it at Into 3 Fitness before is just the meeting yourself. Uh, you know, you get to meet who you are. And that's why I like to challenge people to do it because I think we talked about this recently, but I... I talked about, I told you about how many times like Murph has beaten me or how yeah. I, I got to that point I was, and I knew it. I was like, okay, I'm there. This sucks. I want to quit. And then it just starts flooding into my brain. All of the, the negative self-talk. It's, it's too hot. This is dangerous. You're going too fast. You know, all of that stuff starts coming up. And sometimes I, I like to say most of the time, a majority of the time I push myself through it. I can go a little bit faster, I can hold on, and I get through, but that doesn't happen every time. Sometimes those voices win, and I'm just like, damn it. You know, I, I slow down, I don't go as fast, and even though, you know, there's the negative, sometimes you lose, sometimes you, you win, it's just awesome to get there, and I don't, I don't think that people get there that often today. I just don't think it's something that that people do, and maybe you could do it in any workout, but... My my vessel right now is Murph. So. Yeah, it sounds like Murph kind of forces you to get there no matter kind of how far ahead of the game or how behind the game you are. And I feel like may drop some knowledge bombs today. Like vulnerability maybe it sounds like is the way to meet yourself. And I almost see that as how you kind of define yourself because the more times you meet that vulnerability, it's like you're you're figuring out who you are and what like how far, you know, how strong that armor is and how how you want to be because the more times you find that area it's like it's like you, you d decide who you want to be each time like you make a decision to where you're going to go each time well yeah i've been doing a lot of uh reading great uh reading lately i was just pulling up my phone because i want to make sure i didn't jack up the book oh title. stop you're a great reader you've been reading greatly <laughs> reading greatly <laughs> uh so yeah vulner vulnerability probably popped out because i just recently finished the book daring greatly by Brene brown oh, yeah, yeah. i know you're familiar with her work and all your studies in school and stuff Boom. um but yeah she talks a lot about vulnerability and shame and stuff it's a pretty decent book if anyone wants to check that stuff out it's uh 
yeah, it's about com- becoming better, but uh, it'll, it'll challenge you for sure. But that's a, a different topic. So I think, is that a good, is that a good Murph update? I think I, I'd like to write an article later at Into 3 Fitness and give everybody, like I've found a lot of tips, tricks, and strategies about how to break down the reps, um, how to go faster, how to pace yourself. I've learned a lot. Um, but I think that that might get boring on the podcast in all honesty. Uh, it doesn't make for a great conversation. And I, you know, if you're really interested in getting faster at Murph, that's, that's not the point of me doing all these Murphs. It's not to like tell you how to get an amazing Murph time. I want you to push yourself, find out who you are and get better mentally. Uh, but I will for anyone else who those guys out there who have done it 10, 12 times, uh, you know, right behind me, if you're looking to get better, I will be writing an article soon on that with lots of tips, tricks and strategies. Yeah, well, I mean, 18 times in, has it gotten easier for you over time? I mean, have uh, you gotten faster each time? I know you said a couple of times it's gotten to you. Yeah, so I've been I've been steadily, I don't PR every every single week, uh, but I have PR'd, I've been PR, PRing a lot. So like getting faster right. a lot. And then, uh, but what's funny is the, I will I will tell this strategy, I guess, because it's a part of it is, I, I'd have been trying to blow the first mile out of the water. And so even with a vest on, I could hit sub six minutes on the first mile of Murph. And then I'd go straight to the pull-ups, which was just, it would, I mean, that's a really fast mile for me. I don't know if it's a fast mile for everybody, but that's just, it was blazing fast. I'd be We're just in a wave vest, vest. That's like flash speed. That's like crazy. <laughs> it was, you get used to it. And like when a vest off, you know, I feel like I'm like a gazelle now, but the 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 main thing i'm trying to point out there is i was going so fast because i wanted to just crush it you know i wanted to go as fast as i can but that would blow me out i would slow down on the calisthenics the last mile would be horrible and so i just did the math because i wanted to go 34 minutes on murph or below and i was like okay you just gotta do two seven minute miles and then all the calisthenics have to be each round of the calisthenics has to be under a minute once i did that math it kind of lifted the the barrier, the, the obstacle that was the sub 34 minute Murph, because I was like, dude, you can run a sub six. Like all you have to do is run a seven each time. So I slowed down my mile times to running about a six fifty on the first one, went fast on the calisthenics and hit, uh, I think all pretty much a seven minute on the second mile. And then I got in the 33s on Murph. And to be honest, that was my PR, but it wasn't the hardest Murph I've done because it was, just, it was more, I was going smarter, not harder, which is something. Yeah. That, Something we're going to talk about, which is the perfect <laughs> segue into uh, Parkinson's Law. I don't know. I had one more thing for I'll you, though. Go on the, for on it, the man. Go for it. I'm, I'm yeah. all about Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't move Don't move on so fast yet. So, well, when I see well, we, we've been talking about segue, this armor. Yeah. I see a perfect segue. I have to take the opportunity because <laughs> I knew what we were talking about. But, yeah, okay, let's, let's go back. No, right? that still fits in great for what we're going to talk about later. But... So these times, every time in a, in a Murph, you, you've probably hit that wall or seen the wall coming. So what what have you done in those situations? Like how have you pushed past those? I don't know if this is true for everyone. So you're talking about when I hit the wall. Yeah, just you. The when negative you self talk floods in, and I'm like, yeah. so what are my strategies then? Yeah. Well, the ironic thing is, is there's like it's almost like a sub subconscious right. because when I get to that point, I'm almost satisfied that it has come. Oh. And so I'm like, that's why I call it meeting yourself because it's all I'm almost like. There you are. I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah. And then I can, it's almost like I'm talking to like the completely stripped down version of myself. And I'm like, yeah, you want to, you want to like bitch and complain, but I don't have time for that. We got to go faster. And so that's, it's, it's kind of a positive self-talk, but I'm, I'm actually happy that it's gotten there. I'm like, okay, you've pushed yourself so hard. Everything's broken down. Here it is. And then I, it is kind of some, not every time, but some of the times it's just, or I'd say most of the time it's a, it's a happiness. I'm like, okay, good. You know, I, I can now like, we can get better here. This is yeah. where I can get better. I can push myself harder here and be more mentally tough the next time I do this. So let's, let's go. See, but I feel like that, that's what's, what's so great about what you're talking about is that you've come aware of that now. Now you're looking for that feeling because you know how much better it makes you. Yeah. So like you anticipate it and you prepare for it and you're able to push through it because you're so much aware of it. Well, cause I mean, I've been working out a long time and it's definitely easy for me to just go through the motions. Yeah. Like I've got, I've got the habit down. And so what the, the trap I can fall into now that I have the habit of fitness down is not pushing myself. Cause I could go like 80% effort 
for the rest of my life and be in decent shape or whatever. But if I really want to get better, I have to take it there frequently. And right now it's once a week. I, and you I, don't even mean get better physically. You mean get better psychologically, basically. Right. I mean, yeah, I put, I am focused on being able to do things, lift certain amount, jump, run, all that stuff. And I obviously wouldn't, I wouldn't want to look bad after doing all that work. So yeah, I want, I, I'm, want to look good in the process but the most important aspect to me of why i train uh is a lot has a lot to do with mental toughness and working on that badass player all right dude parkinson's right, law we can move on now <laughs> all right parkinson's law Perfect. parkinson's law is the idea that work expands so as to fill the time available for its completion so maybe we should talk about what that really means because it sounds like it could be a little bit complicated the first time you hear it I really love this because <clears throat> for a few reasons, and I'll, I'll, we'll ask the mag magic question here in, a, here in a minute, but Parkinson's law is probably the definition of what everyone is doing to themselves now. Like if you have any sort of goal, you want to achieve something, you, you put some arbitrary timeline on it almost. Um, wh whether it be a fitness goal, a financial goal, any kind of goal you're like like where would you put like like why would you arbitrarily decide like if you want to write a book why would you decide that it's going to take a year that's what people do and because you said it's going to it's, take it's a year it's natural though if you, you feel like sometimes goals are just are hard to achieve because you haven't done them yet so i think it's natural to feel like oh this is something that's going to be far in advance you know I, i'll get it done when i get there I'll start working now. I can take baby steps. It's okay. I'm not really too worried about it right now. I think that's just the natural thing a lot of people come to. Yeah, and the baby steps thing, I think that's like one of the biggest, like, that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> you know, is uh, you just, you got to go wholeheartedly, but that's, I'm not going to, I'll get off uh, the soapbox there. I just, <laughs> I, I just think that I've never been a fan of baby steps and something I've been saying more and more lately, maybe uh, I can just like, patent it or trademark it is like anything worth doing is worth doing immediately and or, or at least getting started um yeah no i see that yeah because i think i originally someone asked me uh because you know the 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 garage gen the the garage gym athlete book came out recently and someone was interviewing me about the book and they're like what if someone wanted to be a garage gym athlete today like they want to start that today what would you tell them and that was that was like just what what came out i was like anything worth doing is worth doing immediately because like so go into your garage right now if you have no equipment but you want to be a garage gym athlete and go do like 50 push-ups in your garage start today like go ahead and make that boom you're a garage gym athlete right now you did your 50 push-ups <laughs> yeah. in your garage boom boom you Done. sealed the deal on that it's like the the handshake or you know <laughs> I, I i do think that people should get started right away i, and, I feel like it kind of leads into like life's too short like why wait until tomorrow is like kind of what you're saying too yeah, and like, and going back to Parkinson's law, let's let's take it down into writing a paper for school. Okay, because this happens to everyone. Everyone can relate to procrastinating. Yeah, like, I'm a procrastinator. You're a procrastinator. I what? You're a procrastinator? I, I can be. That. Well, I'm a, I'm a procrastinator <laughs> on the things I don't like to do, which is okay. you know that's probably everybody. Yeah, but you know you have to get it done. So say you're writing a paper, uh, needs to be done, or maybe you have a project to work or something. And your boss or teacher, or professor is like, "Hey, it's due in seven days." Then, what what are you doing six and a half days after they said it was due? Uh, you're writing the paper all freaking day and all freaking night to turn it in the next day. And that's not everyone. I know some people are super proactive. Congratulations, you've figured life out. But <laughs> the, the rest of us haven't, and it can be, you know, that's that's what we do. But if if your professor or boss, whether your paper or project, uh, comes in and says same same week instead of saying seven days he drops his paper on you and he says you got three days to do it you know or it, you have to do it, it it's due tomorrow right. you're gonna get it done right the same paper you'll get it done in the same amount of time and that's a very small example <laughs> you, you have a pretty good uh feel for it but this is what we're calling the magic question if you have a a 10-year dream or a goal 10 years out from right now, what's stopping you from doing it in six months? Boom. And it's, really though, it's it, once, once like, like I know it's a really simple question, but the first time I heard that it like forced me to be like, well, 
one, do I have any 10 year yeah, goals or dreams? Yeah, do you have a 10 year goal? Okay, and it'd be, good, it'd be good to start writing those down yeah. if I haven't yet. Um, and two, seriously, when you stop and think about it, um, what is stopping you? It's yeah. not effort, right? Right. And I, th- I think it becomes the mentality that you have around it. And I think we're going to talk a little bit more about how you can, you, can, you can start looking at it differently. But I think it starts with, you know, just trying to work smarter. Just to ask the question one more time. So what's stopping you from achieving your 10-year goal in the next six yeah. months? And what's... the knee-jerk reaction for everyone. So I want anyone listening to this, ask yourself that question. And like Talon said, you probably – like. First, if you don't have the 10-year goal, maybe sit down, let pause the podcast, like work on some three, five, and 10-year goals, and then ask yourself, okay, what's stopping me from achieving that in the next six months? And the knee-jerk reaction is work harder. Right. That's what everyone's going to say. You're going to say, I just need to work harder. I would, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ramp it up to 16-hour days every single day. You know what, the family's kind of slowing me down, so I'll get rid of them. You know, like all of these ridiculous solutions which just center really center around working harder that's not the real way to achieve it you have to start asking yourself different questions from different directions right and and it doesn't feel good also when you're like oh dang i'm not working hard enough i need to work hard to get there so the first thing you do is almost go you mentioned it a little bit earlier is almost probably go to this a little bit of shaming yourself like oh i've got a 10-year goal oh but you know maybe it is possible to complete it in six months well, I'm probably not working hard enough if, that, if I'm going ahead and saying it's a 10-year 10 year, 10 year well, goal. I'm being a slacker. Yeah. Yeah. What's wrong with me is no. the first kind of question, the kind of mentality you take. Yeah. And I'm I'm saying like if you have – even if you have an epic 10-year goal, like just – I don't care what it is. Like say you make $50,000 a year right now and you want to make $5 billion a year in 10 years from now. I'm, I'm talking about any goal, asking yourself that question – is going to make you uh, come up with some really creative solutions. And you know what? It might not, you might not achieve that goal in six months, but if you really actually start down that path, you're going to come up with some creative solutions that I guarantee will jumpstart you achieving your goal much faster. The way it does it, I really feel like is because it totally, it totally changes your your mentality and your mindset about your goals. Cause it forces you to have to think outside the box. Cause you can't just say, you know, some of those those goals people are going to throw out for 10 years in, in the future are going to be pretty, you know, big. They're going to be big time because people, everybody, everybody thinks their future is going to be great, right? Right. Everybody that has a positive attitude about what's going to happen and what they're doing. All the better human listeners out there. Right. <laughs> All the other guys. But when you, when you force yourself to like break it down and think, okay, six months from now, now it's not just working harder. It's, it's trying these other avenues. It's trying to work a lot smarter than I'm doing now and, and, Talking, making new connections, talking to different people. So it's a whole lot of new ideas that are going to come to you because you're going to have to look for shortcuts. Yeah, shortcuts. Uh, yeah, relationship relationships with different people. Uh, crazy deals, crazy ideas. Like, because I, I ask myself this question. You know, I'm not just proposing it to everyone out there and just being like, okay, you guys have fun with that. Like, I, I ask myself this question, and I will tell you uh, from personal experience what the answers you come up with uh, are scary because you will, (laughs) you will come up with some pretty crazy stuff and maybe you'll never act on it because uh, it's maybe it's really unorthodox. Maybe it's crazy. Maybe it scares the shit out of you. Whatever the case is, it, it can be, it can be pretty crazy, which brings me back to Parkinson's law. Pursuit of progress. Parkinson's laws is relatively simple, but if you're setting a goal, the time frame in which you're setting it in, I don't know if whether the challenge should just be set it in a shorter time frame or just ask yourself the question. Because if we bring it back down to more achievable goals, we ask we ask everyone the magic question. But if we're talking about uh, not saying that ten year goals aren't achievable, but bringing it back down to like I'd say smaller short term goals, that's where Parkinson's law really I feel like comes into play. That's where it's more prominent and and makes more sense to be aware of it that because i had bobby maximus on the podcast i don't know a couple weeks ago the guy uh the director of uh training for jim jones and he said he was talking about deadlifting and he was saying i I don't remember the exact weights but it was like he had never he had only ever pulled like 500 pounds before and then some 
like professional NFL player came to his gym and deadlifted like 600 pounds for like 12 reps. And, <laughs> and he was like, uh, okay, I'm just a slacker. Now I can't remember the time frame he said, but it was like within three weeks he had like a 605 pound deadlift. I'm still a little bit confused about the physics behind that, <laughs> but you know, he talked a lot about, uh, just mental limitations and what he thought he could truly achieve. And I really feel like that's Parkinson's law too. Cause if you ask me, it's like, all right, Jared, you have to deadlift 600 pounds and you have to do it in the next three weeks. Uh, I mean, I would probably start in all honesty. My initial consideration would be some sort of performance enhancing drug would be the only <laughs> way I could <laughs> actually do it. Uh, but you know, I'd probably come up with a lot shortcuts, of shortcuts like yeah. to the max. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Coming up with some really creative solutions. Uh, <laughs> that's but, really creative. Yeah. But, uh, it, it, that's just I, I wanted to bring it back to the fitness level because you know that, that's where my my heart and soul is most of the time yeah um but i i really even you're other than getting crazy like you don't want to like okay i want to lose 50 pounds i'm gonna do it in two weeks because it might be possible but you don't want to do that uh yeah. but the more healthy goals out there you could probably achieve it a little bit faster than you think it, it's not necessarily that i i, I hate to be the debbie downer because it's not necessarily that you're going to complete it in six months but I really feel like it's the it's the switch that you make in your head where you feel like, okay, now if I do all these things, I'll get done that much faster. And, you know, maybe it's not always about the timetable. It's really just about thinking about the entire situation differently and going through that problem-solving process and that time management and working smarter process. Yeah, just doing it as an exercise, even if maybe you only act on 10% of the solutions you come up with. Right. Because maybe some of them are too unrealistic for your life. you got a family. you got a job, whatever, and you don't want to like cut, you know, like do all this crazy stuff to achieve your goal. Yeah, man. So Parkinson's law. It's a way to look at things differently. Yeah. And that, get things done quicker. And that question. Yeah. The magic question. Ask, ask yourself that question. I asked myself and I was like, okay, I need to start writing some goals down. <laughs> <laughs> Mind blown. <laughs> all right, guys, I think that does it for this podcast. Thank you for listening as always. And uh, if you're enjoying the show, leave us a five-star review and positive comment on iTunes. We'd really appreciate it. But until next time. Thanks. Peace. always whine about their best. <laughs>